weather is uh, hot, <laughs> but we're here to talk about <coughs> your art and craft, photography, <coughs> and uh, photographing uh, some of the top artists in the world. <coughs> How did you begin mm -hmm. this journey into photographing people, creative people? Mm -hmm. So, my, I'm a student of um, painting. My guru is A. Ramachandran and I continue to call him a guru because he's somebody who I learn from, I grow with his body of knowledge and therefore he's somebody I track and trail wherever he, he goes. I follow him. So he is somebody I would go to meet often in his studio after I finished my studies with him in college. And every time I went, I felt I'm learning something new. So very consciously, I started carrying the dictaphone, the still camera. Um, and um, uh, the, the movie camera at that time, all of which was very expensive, to document him. So it was a very conscious effort to document the man who was a complete recluse because I felt the ideas, the, the depth of information he has and the knowledge and wisdom he has, I would want to embrace it, document it and in time to come write about it. Uh, more so the need because I felt he doesn't move out of his studio. He's a man who is very comfortable in his studio and I, don't, I didn't want the ideas to die down. It's different that he went on to write four books uh, on his body of work, but I think in time to come when I do write, it will be uh, a, a series of uh, uh, thoughts about me, the student, and how I learned from the man. So uh, this process was 30 years ago. I would start, I would carry my equipment to document him, but I think in time to come, the camera became like a Siamese twin for me. I started carrying it to spaces where I would be with friends in their studios, to art camps and and I don't think, uh, if I look back, I don't think I was thinking of a project. I just went, was passionate about carrying the camera. Um, I think my husband said something very interesting. He said there's Alcoholic Anonymous and if there was a Photographer's Anonymous, you will be leading it uh, because I feel, I, I just, I'm driven to capture moments. The fact that I'm a painter and a fellow friend of most of the people I have photographed has been very special because I've been privy to moments which are very fragile, which some outsider wouldn't have been able to capture. So think of a, think of a moment where you ring up a friend and said, okay, I'm coming to your studio, I'll have khana and chai with you. Can I do that today? So yeah, yeah, okay, come. So you spend a whole day with a friend or a peer or a senior and you live you, you're with them while they're doing their daily chores and the painting and that's when you capture these moments. So, what are these fragile moments you refer to? Well, for one, there was one very I, I, it's distinct in my memory when Nilima Sheikh, who is a painter, I completely, I thoroughly respect because also her body of work is very similar to what I am showing in my work. We are both inspired by the miniature and the Persian tradition. So I wanted to learn a technique of gesso from her. So I wanted to spend the day not to photograph her, but to spend the day learning her technique in painting, which I could incorporate in my work. And in between her, her canvases, she once just sat on her chair, completely exhausted, as if taking a deep breath. And that's the time I captured her. So that's a very, a, a moment of a very you know, tired Nilima in her studio finishing part of a canvas. It's not in this one. This is another work. But there's so many images, really that eventually I don't know. I mean, I can't put all of them. They're just 450 images. But 12 years of work is a humongous bank of images. So someday it could be a series of books. But currently, I don't know. I'm just going with the flow. I thought 450 is enough to show at the BNR. What is it that intrigues you when you watch an artist at work? What are those moments of uh, infraction or moments of <clears throat> departure? I think it's more the frame of, of an artist. It's, I mean, I think I'm, when I, if I look back, it's, it's not just the act of painting. It's the time and the organic, organic quality of the time with the person. In this case, it's photographers, but otherwise it's my family, it's my friends. But with, with artists, I think it's more special because um, you're kind of immortalizing a generation. And um, to give you an example, just four days back, Nalani Mukherjee passed away. It was 10.30 at night and I got a call from four 
very dear friends of hers, Vivan, Kalidas, Rajiv Lochan the next day asking for images of Dilu because there weren't any to do an obituary. And that is when it just hit me that, my God, in time to come, there'll be a day when we are all gone. And what will remain is his images because imagine there weren't images of hers available to write something about her for the next day in the press. So I think that not just we all, it just hit all of us that day that Dilu's gone and all one has is a, images of a, from a, taken by a few friends, you know. Uh, when you observe an artist at work, uh, what sort of a dynamic uh, sort of kicks in? Mm -hmm. Uh, does the artist himself or herself become conscious of you as mm -hmm. a photographer? Mm -hmm. what, is, what happens? No, I think that's where being a friend has helped. Uh, more often than not, there hasn't been discomfort. But when there has, my friends have said, not today please, you know. In which case, then I've even taken the opportunity to photograph them while they're installing shows. Because the whole idea is to photograph them in their creative space. So if they're uncomfortable with the act of me being there in their studio, when they display their show, those three, four days of angst and suffering and misery, I'm there on, like a fly on the wall, quietly capturing those images, you know. So, uh, but what I must say is in time to come, even those who were a little uncomfortable with the idea have become open. And that happened because four years back, um, the project was shown by the Devi Foundation in Delhi. And uh, what happens is artists are a very sensitive and a loving lot. So when they see a fellow friend doing so much passionately, I haven't taken a penny from every, anyone. It's self-funded. I think the realization has dawned on the few friends who were uncomfortable that she actually is doing it with love. So let's do, let's help her instead of posing. So I've had friends who earlier told me we are uncomfortable, that they've called me when they've come to town saying, Manisha, we are displaying the show, you can come. Which I thought was a sweet, you know, victory. <laughs> uh, what is that sensibility that uh, uh, drives your work? Mm -hmm. What are the impulses that drive your work? The work as in the painting, photography yeah. or yeah. both? Uh, both. But well, <clears throat> when people, I'm not sure if I'm diverting, but people have asked me, how has a photography project helped you as a painter? And I, I did ask myself that question because my pain, my my work is very, uh, very detailed, very minute. And here I am, having gone to studios of artists who are doing work with video, with you know, outsourced some part of their work. But I feel if I look back, that when you enter an artist studio, you're entering a very um, serene and a very, uh, it's a very clean place. We all have veils, right? But when you enter a studio of a creative person, in this case a painter or a sculptor, he's without his veils. Even if he pretends to have it, the studio gives it away. It's how they live. So when you go to another space where the person is without judgments, without their screen, and you also shift yours, you also drop yours. And then I think that interaction helps you become a less judgmental person in life. So as an artist, I've become less judgmental of friends. There were friends whose work I didn't connect with, but I knew that they are important for my project. So I went, right? But when you go to that space, I think it's beautiful because you realize they are doing something which they love. They're not pretending, that's their love. You might not like it. So it's helped me reduce my judgments. It's helped me open up to many mediums of art because I'm a pure painter and I think just to accept people for what they are doing helps you grow as an individual, right? And that's been my, my shift in this 12-year journey with photographing artists. I mean, not just artists anymore, now it's, it's curators, it's, it's um, uh, gallerists and collectors. Because when I would photograph the artist who was installing his work in a gallery, who's come from outside the city because I'm not fund, funding it, so when they come from another city, I would just attack the gallery. The curator was happened to be there, the collector walks in and the gallerist is obviously there. So the project grew organically from just photographing artists to now it encompasses the entire artwork.
Tom. And you're based in Delhi. Right? Sorry? You're based in Delhi. Correct? I'm based in Delhi. Uh, as a painter, as a photographer, mm -hmm. what are those uh, fine convergences in your mm -hmm. craft? Mm -hmm. That's what I said. I think the convergence for me is more a, more a convergence of, a, of the self. I'm not sure if it's coming visually in my painting, but obviously what you are translates into what you do. But it is, it is, you, you become cleaner, you become, as I said, less judgmental, you take people for what they are, and you know, we artists are a very egoistic lot. Um, and sometimes rightly so, because we believe in what we do, and therefore the other person is, it's okay, you know. But this project has helped me take everyone for what they are. And I think probably I'm a better mother also. <laughs> because you become more uh, giving with people around you. You don't... I try to. But this has helped me is what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm there. But it's helped me. It helped me to take people, personalities for what they are. I mean, clean studios, very dirty studios. Studios where others are working. There's so many dynamics you see in such spaces, you know. And of course, meeting minds, you know. When you meet a good mind, by osmosis, you learn something. When you said about uh, being a better mother, ah. so uh, I'm going to be the boss, boss Krishna Machari. Mm. He said, uh, if you are a good father, yeah. you make a good curator. You make a good? Curator. Interesting. Yeah. There you go. And vice versa. Interesting, yeah. Uh, another thing that has always uh, I've been curious about is the in the artistic process, mm -hmm. the process of creating something. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been a painter and moved into photography. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't moved. I'm dabbling in it. Dab I continue to paint. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, <clears throat> two different mediums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that that you uh, sort of do you take something from the essential craft of painting and bring to bear it on photography? I'm sure it's happening, Shrini, but I don't know if how it's happening. I think sometimes you become so involved that you don't realize it. And I've asked my friends, but the outside world probably will be able to help better on how it's helping my painting process. Um, if at all I can think of video, because I'm seeing such interesting video. Uh, my work is, uh, as I said, um, it's a two-dimensional work. But interestingly, I'm looking at video, which is also probably to do with my photography, as one of the mediums in my practice as a painter. That was something I couldn't have thought of five years back. So the images and the ideas are brimming. When they trust it, I don't know. But so there is that something else being added to my process, which hasn't yet conceptualized, so to say. You've been to the Vienna Absolutely, yeah, many times over. What have been your impressions? Um, A, to have something like this, I mean, I laud, this is what Bose and Riaz have done, I think it's adding so much to our country. What the Jaipur Lit Festival has done for the world of literature, they both have done to the world of visual arts. And, um, and I mean, for me, as I said, I on my own have been telling friends. I mean, yesterday I had cousins who had come who have nothing to do with art just to visit the Biennale because I forced them. They keep tripping trips. I said, You have to come, you know. I just wish, as a nation, we get back to being the discerning visual culture we had, which I think even till our own grandparents' generation they had it, which somehow we are losing. And that can only come with spaces like that. And yesterday there was a very interesting comment which Jitish made that I wish kids from Kochi say, oh, we are so many Biennals old. You know, how beautiful is that? If our kids, uh, we can develop a visual culture, we'll be a happier people uh, as, a, as a nation, you know. So a definite must and I really pray and wish that this gets more support but for that we have to educate and for that media has to play an important role. It has to be spoken about while it's on. Even if the publication is only concerned about their city. But it has it's like Sarya Mirza wins something. Won't you write about it? Even if it's a Delhi publication or a Bombay, you will write about it. So if something like this happens, I feel it's very important for it to be written. They should break that rule of saying, no, we can't cover non-Delhi events. Why? You know? 
that's where I feel the media's role will be of great pertinence. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you Shini. Thank you.